Last year, I created a strong safety by the name of Ace Cannon. This year, I decided to go on the offensive side and create a 6-6 wide receiver named Escobar Sanchez. 6-6, 230 pounds, red zone threat to go along with that beastly rushing attack that the Rams will have this season with Todd Gurley and Trey Mason. You see the apparel, the equipment, which will change every week. Because you know I have to keep my players looking clean and fresh. And look at the speed. 90 speed, I think. Not only is he tall, not only is he physical, this guy can get the job done. Red zone threat? I think he's a deep threat as well as we play week one against the Seattle Seahawks and I am the starting receiver which means Escobar Sanchez, Richard Sherman. The matchup of the century. And look at Tavon Austin, he is the fifth wide receiver on the depth chart. I am a 69 overall, I did go with the uh, undrafted. Uh, storyline because I wanted to get XP faster I wanted that superstar XP but I think the only reason why I'm number one in the depth chart is because I'm tall as shit so that's basically why but let me shut up and let's get into this intro Did you just say that Pete Carroll had 13 playoff appearances? He's only been a coach in the NFL for like four years. What? It's ridiculous. We'll find out some of those answers here today. And Tavon Austin is the one back deep waiting for the opening kick. And Steven Hauschka is ready now to get this one started. Steven Hauschka. Steven Hauschka. That's an excellent name. But here we are. Our first possession of the game. And there it is. Escobar Sanchez, the future Hall of Famer, gets his first NFL catch of his career. Hopefully, there is many more catches to come as I'm playing Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman has amazing, amazing man coverage. Not just man coverage alone, but zone coverage as well. And like during this game, it was just hard, hard for me to get any separation from Richard Sherman, but that's okay because my fellow wide receivers are picking up the slack and Jerry Cook, who is a 90 overall in this game mode, I mean, I, I don't know how, but like he is a pretty good tight end, but 90 overall, that's a, I would say pushing it, but we do not get the first down here. Even though it's fourth and one, I wanted to go for it, but coach told me, hey, shut up, you're only a rookie, sit your ass back down on the bench. So we have to go for the field goal, and we convert the field goal, making this a 3-0 to zero game over the reigning NFC champions. As we get the ball back, as the Seattle offense does not do anything, and there it is, Trey Mason with the huge gain down the right side. He now has four rushes for 23 yards against a stout Seattle Seahawks defense. We want to establish the run early and often. But why not surprise them with the deep pass? As Nick Foles gets brought down by KJ Wright in the backfield, though. Nick Foles is very not happy about taking the sack. But on the third and 16, dropping back, I'm telling him to throw my way. But Nick Foles decides to throw it down to the flats, which was a pretty smart decision as third and 16 was merely impossible. So we do have to punt the ball away. And the Seattle Seahawks do take the ball down the field and score, making this a 7-3 game. We're trying to keep this game as close as possible, but we cannot keep it close as possible if Nick Foles is throwing interceptions like that to Kerry Williams. But luckily, the Seattle Seahawks do not get any points on the board, so the score is still 7-3. 3-3. Looking my way. No, he's not. He looked the other receiver's way. But all that matters is that we got the first down. 
There we go, white boy. Let's go. Second and ten. Nick Foles dropping back and throws it directly to Jeremy Lane. If Nick Foles continues to throw like this throughout the season, I will literally egg his house. But luckily, the Seattle Seahawks cannot do anything with that. And on the first and ten, there it goes, my second catch of the game. Finally making an impact. Trying to drive down the field with only a minute and 30 seconds left. If Nick Foles wants to win this game, he has to just throw it to Escobar Sanchez, whether I'm open or not. But he decides to throw the ugliest pass I've ever seen in my life out of bounds. Second and five. Dropping it down to Todd Gurley who gets the first down and more. But we weren't able to do much on that drive until we had to settle for the field goal. Start of the second half. The score is 7-6. to six. Nick Foles jumps it down. Second and two. Running cover two. Nick Foles, I'm open. What are you doing? Wow. Wow. I just can't believe. I think that is his third. He threw, he's thrown three interceptions this whole game. He almost threw a fourth interception right there, but Bobby Wagner dropped the ball. I'm pretty sure that's not what they signed him to a big contract extension for the drop passes. But he did there, and luckily he did. And on the third and five, we convert the third down conversion. But look at the stats. Three interceptions thrown by Nick Foles. But we are only down by one. And a poorly thrown pass on third and one. To make it fourth and one. But we are going for it because we want to win this game. Doing some chances at the line. The ball is snapped, and Nick Foles throws a perfect dot. First and 10, going in motion. Going to my favorite spot, finding and setting myself in the zone where I get my third reception of the game. And on the third and 10, Nick Foles just gets brought down in the backfield. Chris Abel gets the sack. So we have to settle for the field goal. Three field goals in this game. We cannot finish drives. We have to keep settling for field goal, which we cannot do. But apparently, the Seattle Seahawks offense cannot put any more points on the board. So we have to strike. We have to attack. But another interception thrown by Nick Foles. Bruce Irvin with the interception. And with that, folks, the Seattle Seahawks take the lead, a one-point lead after kicking a field goal. But Nick Foles decides to take it upon himself and rush for 18 yards. Go, 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 First and 10. Nick Foles drops back in shotgun and decides to finally throw it up to Escobar Sanchez, but Richard Sherman is there. And as they get up, Richard Sherman decides to talk smack to Escobar Sanchez. And that lights a fire under Escobar. Catching that pass on second and 10 to convert the first down. First and 10, Nick Foles dropped back. I need Kenny Brick for the first down again as we move the ball. With only a little bit seconds left. Until the two minute warning, Nick Foles throws a dot. Nick Foles is playing fearlessly, even though throwing four picks in this game, he throws his first passing touchdown of the season to Trey Mason. The St. Louis Rams are going crazy. The St. Louis fans are going crazy. The whole city is going crazy as we atop the Seattle Seahawks. And to give us a greater lead, we decide to go for the two-point conversion, which is converted. Giving us a seven-point lead. And not only that, giving us the win over the Seattle Seahawks. A great game by us. I wouldn't say a great game by Nick Foles as he threw four interceptions. But we fought back and we stayed in it with big help from our defense containing the Seattle Seahawks offense. Make sure you guys stay tuned for week two and three coming up next. 
as Escobar Sanchez, the really thug in the NFL, tries to score his first NFL touchdown and also tweets to Richard Sherman, don't you ever talk smack to me again, I'm the best wide receiver in the NFL.